Hello, everyone. Welcome to another webinar. I'm Lucy Fernandez, and today we will let, we will uh, have a little overview of the Family Search tree. This lesson will be available on YouTube and Facebook. It looks like we're having some trouble streaming on Facebook, so maybe it's better if you could just join us on YouTube. Let me just see what's going on. Okay, and well, these webinars, they happen every first and third Thursday of the month. So if you just go to our pages on Family Search face on Facebook, Family Search Europe, you will find find out about the next events there. And the lesson handout will be available under files on the Facebook page. And if you have any questions pertinent to today's lesson, just post it in the chat and questions will be answered after the presentation. So let's just open our family search today. So, okay, so here we are. So family search tree allows you to extend your family tree. And as you add generations, family tree can link you to ancestors that are already in the system. Use record hints to find additional records for your family. To protect the privacy of living people, other family search users cannot see information that you enter about living family members. We'll talk a little about that in a while. So how do we do this? Very simple. Just click on the arrows. Let's just start here. Let's find here. See, add child. This is how we add new children to the family tree. For now, this is what uh, we'll use. So just add the person's name as well as dates in place places of birth or death, and whatever you know or can find out, okay? So what we do is we just click here, click on by name, and here it is. Add at least one name or surname. But of course, if you know all the names, just add them here. Add the sex, don't forget the gender here and if it's a deceased or living person. This is important for viewing on the tree. And then you can add other details here. If you are not sure about dates and places, you can just write about 1930, for example, because everything here can be edited later. And the birthplace, if you're not sure of the birthplace, don't just put there con the country because uh, you could uh, have a lot of homonyms with the same name from the same country. Try to use the last known place because this can be edited as well. And then you just click next. Very simple. And this is how you can find children. So as you add names to the tree, your family tree, family search looks for matches. So if your deceased grandmother is already in the tree, for example, you will find her and make the connection. Finding matches is common. The community family tree is made up of contributions from researchers from all over the world, made over many years. In addition to looking for likely ancestors matches in family search, we also have the collection of historical records, and family search searches all those names for any deceased ancestors that you had. 
when it finds a match will show you a hint. You can recognize the hints by the blue icon that shows up, like this one here. I have a lot of them right here. So review the hints, just click on the blue icon and there a list. In this case, I have a list. There I have four hints. So just check to see if they are really a match. And if so, this is a great way to add new branches to the family tree. So if you're on the landscape view here in this arrow, you can select the views. So if you're on the landscape view, just use the arrows to expand the tree to the end of the line. Let's just find someone here. See, this is the end, the end of the line for this couple. So right here, we can add father and mother. And if you go to this little arrow on the, the couple's box, you can add child. Now, if you go to the portrait view, just click here. You, this is the same thing. Use the arrows to find the last, the last line, the end of the line in this case. So click father, click mother, and you can also, let me just find someone here. So when I'm at the end of the line, I can just click here and add child. It's quite simple. If you want to add a child for another couple, let's just say this one here, just click on him, click on tree, and then he will go and appear as the starting person now. And then you can have the option to add a child. So let's go. Another way that you can add people to your tree is using the family tree light. Let me just try to explain what that is. So if you just click on, let me just go back here. See this little question mark? This is the help. This is one of our best friends on family search tree. Just click here. And just write light like this, L-I-T-E. And you will have options that will take you to articles explaining how to work on family tree light, what it is, and things like that. You just click on one. I'm going to use this stream, streamlining your family history with family tree light because it has a direct link there. So let's just go there and see if you just follow the article, you will, it will explain a lot of the things that you may need. And it has this little links here. So here, again, it is explaining everything. You can just go and explore Family Tree Light. So when you go to Family Tree Light, This is quite interesting. So this is a version of family tree that is used in areas of the world where the primary access to internet is on mobile devices with very low bandwidth and limited data. You can use it to add information about living and deceased persons to family tree. Family tree Light uses the same database as the full version of Family Tree. The information that you add using Family Tree Light is available in the full version immediately. You do, do not need to synchronize or wait. Family Tree Light, however, doesn't have all the features available on Family Search and Family Tree Mobile App. For example, you cannot use memories 
historical records, messages, and other services that take too much bandwidth. Indexing is only available on the website. So, but even so, Family Tree Lite is available on 16 languages. Not everyone has, has it available yet. So let's just see here. So in Family Tree Light, you can view four generations of your direct line ancestors directly from one screen. See here, this is the starting person. And now on the same page, I have parents and siblings. And then I have grandparents on father's side and mother's side. And I still have great grandparents, all in one page. So this is quite nice if you want to see them all together. You can also add spouse here. You can add a child. And then you can even, let's go back here. You can add siblings add another parent if you have more than one set of parents. Then for the grandparents, you can add child as well. And you can just use it this way. Whatever you do here synchronizes with Family Search Tree, the website and the, the app. So everything will be here. The thing is, you cannot do everything that you can do on the other two. But if you're having a problem with internet, this is a way that you can still use family search without needing too much bandwidth. So let's just go back here. Let's go to the landscape because I wanna show you another thing. So let's just go back Let's go to recent. Let's go to my tree now because I want to show you something here. So, when you're here, you'd notice that I have some living persons here. See? Of course, I'm talking to you. Here I am. So, living person. If you just use my ID, to try and search me, you will not find me. So because adding living generations connects you to your deceased ancestors, and you need living ancestors to make, living parents to make that connection to deceased grandparents. However, family search restricts access to records of living people to protect their privacy. Let's just come here for a while. So only you will be able to see the records of the living people you had. But you keep in mind that the memories attached to them are potentially viewable by anyone, whether they are registered users. So living individuals cannot be searched by name in family tree or searched by ID number, only by those who created their record. Relationships between living people can be added by ID, again, only by those who created their record. A living individual has a different ID number for every person that adds his or her record to family tree. This is why we cannot share IDs for living people. Well, you can, but you will not find them because everyone that has a family tree needs to add a living person again to their tree. What happens is that this allows us to work on the records while still maintaining privacy. And these duplicate records can be merged once someone reports the individual has deceased and provide the appropriate documentation. So after everyone is deceased you and change 
the living to 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 deceased, then they will appear and we can merge them all together as one. So for a new person, you already know how to do it, but I want to show you something else. So for example, let's go back here. Let's go to another one. Let's add a child. So I've shown you this, how to add the details. But let's say you already know this person exists on your tree. So instead of going by name, you can just add the ID number here. And this will go directly to that person so you can link them here to the tree. So this is also quite simple. There's the, there is another way for you to find someone that already exists on the tree. You just go here. See here, find the same thing. You can search by name or you can search by ID. Family search will look for that name everywhere. Of course, if it is a very common name, you'll probably have to look through a lot of records just to, to make sure it's the right one. So uh, now let's just talk a little bit about another place where you can add names. And this is the family search apps. So today we have three apps that we can use. Family tree, memories, and get involved. So you can just download these apps to your phone. If you want to know how to find this page, is again, it's quite simple. Let me just go here to, let's go to the home page of Family Search. Just click here. Every time you click on the Family Search icon, it takes you to the home page. Okay? And let's go down there to the last part of the page. See that we have these little links here? You can just click here on mobile apps and it will take you to this page here. Okay? You can just click there. But if you want, again, use our best friend here and just click app and see what happens see there are a lot of things and this knowledge knowledge articles will explain what you can do with them and how to to find them and where where you can download those names so let's just go here i just want to show you uh some of the things we can do See if we could just go here. It just it just lets you know that you can download this for for Apple and for Android. And you can just see it here. So let's let me just explain some of the differences between Family Tree app and Memories app. So the Family Tree app allows you to view and edit information about your relatives including memories for a specific relative. So this is another way we can add family members to the tree. It focuses on a relative, his or her story and, and information, and provides his or her entire profile. Does not require the memories app to function, and both apps are available for Apple and Android devices. Now, the Memories app helps you collect, preserve, and share your family memories, photos, and audio recordings. It focuses on memory items. You cannot see your relative's complete profile outside of your use to tag memories to relatives. It does not require the Family Tree app to function, so these are separate. So here, if you want to know a little more about each one of them, just click here on 
the images and this will take you to the page explaining about the family tree app can you just look at that how where to download it this is the memories page it explains what you can do and what's new and the best thing is you use it on your phone and we have our phone every time with us all the time so just use it just capture the images and just put it on memory so it doesn't get lost and you've always know no will know where to find it and then we have the get involved now the get involved is very simple you can use it pretty much everywhere on the bus you can use it while on the car uh, while you're waiting for a uh, when you stop at some roadworks there's a lot of places you can use it so what it does is very simple it uses name review you can just help us review these names that the artificial intelligence is trying to read and the the more we you, we do this the more uh this artificial artificial in, intelligence gets intelligent <laughs> if you understand and this is very simple you can just do this and uh, do 20 names this is not 20 records or 20 pages this this is about regarding to names so you can just review 20 names 50 names whatever you want whatever you have time to and this will just help you can just say is this the name is correct or no or you can just skip it so this is some of the things you can do with the apps so let me just go back here so we can finish today So now we've covered pretty much how to add names on our tree and everything else we can do. And just get familiar with Family Tree Light. Sometimes it's very handy when you have internet problems. So just go here, try and explore. Just by looking, you won't change a thing. And then you can try and add names in the different ways that we've talked about today just following the, the arrows here go down there add a child or go and find the last living relative so the end of the line so you can add father and mother so let me just see if we have any questions for today Well, it doesn't look like it. Well, so thank you for being here. I hope you, you'll be here next time. So just follow us on Family, uh, our Family Search Europe group on Facebook and YouTube so we can help each other again next time. So have fun and thank you for being here with us today. Bye-bye.